Have you ever wanted to have full control over your voice no matter how anxious, nervous or tired you feel? Today, I'm going to share with you tips to help you out if you're struggling to control your tone of voice. Let's talk about the power of owning your voice with extra special tips from an opera singer and executive speaking consultant. If this is your first time popping onto this channel, let me take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Sarah Geiger, executive speaking coach, opera singer, and speech therapist with voice treatment expertise. And for the past years, I've been working on not only my own speaking and singing voice for about 20 years, but also helping thousands of other people over the past decade to increase their vocal control and confidence using both performance and voice therapy methods. In today's episode, I will share with you how to determine the tone of your voice so that you can differentiate between using a healthy or non-healthy voice tone. I'll give you some voice tone examples. We'll look at why your tone of voice matters, as well as a few tips to increase the consistency and symmetry of your vocal sound and color. So let's get started. I always like to tell my executive speaking clients that there are two ways to use your voice. The right way and the wrong way, as simple as that. If you're wondering whether your voice is working for you correctly, you should focus on consistency. Healthy voices produce a consistent sound in all environments, no matter your mood, and with all contacts. But obviously, there is a degree of skill required to achieve that. Most speakers, if their voice is mostly healthy, are able to secure a consistent sound when they feel comfortable and confident. Advanced elite communicators can secure a consistent sound no matter how nervous or anxious they feel, and that's what tends to set apart a professional singer, a professional actor, or professional elite public speaker from the general public. But that being said, it's important to remember that vocal consistency is a trainable skill. So if you feel like you need to show up with increased vocal presence, clarity, and emphasis and charisma, Don't give up because there are tools that you can implement to improve the sound of your voice. The best approach to take is a science-backed approach with some performance strategies added for flavor and charisma. Over on my main platform at saragiger.com, you can find loads of strategies to increase your executive presence and charisma, so make sure you check out added resources over on the website. Now, you might be wondering, how can you describe your voice tone? In terms of the science and theory behind acoustics and voice production, there are three core voice tone examples that I want you to have full understanding of after today's episode. The first example is nasal resonance or tone. When our voice is nasal, a lot of the sound wave is coming through the nasal cavity, resulting in this kind of sound. Now to test that, all you need to do is place a mirror underneath your nose. Release a vowel sound like ah, And if your mirror fogs up, that will indicate to you that you've got too much nasal release coming through the passageway, resulting in hypernasality. Nasality is a feature that lots of people are concerned about. If you'd like to learn more about how to eliminate it, it requires a proper assessment. And the best step would be to enroll in the High Performance Communication Audit. That will give me a chance to screen your voice tone and work out if there are factors impacting in terms of hypernasality. The next voice tone example is an unhealthy voice pattern. I won't model it for you because it's actually really harmful for my voice as a professional singer, voice therapist and speaking consultant, and someone who's using my voice daily. I need it to be healthy and clear and not to get any wear and tear but I'll describe the tone for you. Pharyngeal tone is when the bulk of your sound wave gets caught in the back of the throat. It results in a hoarse, croaky quality. It's very bad not only for the health and integrity of the muscle, it raises inflammation, strain, fatigue, and reduced tone consistency, but also plummets measures in terms of executive presence and charisma. Pharyngeal resonance you'll hear in many speakers around you, especially when they're more nervous, and it's the result of unhealthy vocal calibration due to performance pressure, 
stress, or simply not understanding how to wire the maneuvers needed at a muscular level, an air pressure level, and a breath preparation level to achieve optimal tone. If you're concerned that your voice has pharyngeal resonance or pharyngeal tone, you want to get that assessed, and as a result, plug and play voice therapy exercises to achieve even optimal resonance or tone, as well as incorporate self-regulation strategies into your communication so that your emotions aren't overtaking your capacity to produce a clean and clear sound. The last of three voice tone examples that I want to discuss is oral resonance. Oral resonance is what you're hearing right now. It's when the bulk of your sound wave is produced within the mouth cavity without going too much through the nose or dwelling in the back of the throat, resulting in a creaky sound. It's a projectable acoustic tone that can be measured in sound waves. It's the product of a loose, relaxed vocal muscle. So the muscle is loose and free good posture, and even release of the airstream at the exact pressure level that your voice requires for the acoustic outcome you're aiming to achieve. So in a nutshell, you can reach the volume you need without effort, strain, and increased pressure on the muscle, which results in a very sonorous, easy to listen to sound. Hopefully you're enjoying the sound of my voice tone in this episode. That is the property of oral resonance. A lot of speakers may have it naturally, but with pressure in life and communication stress, or even just poor habits vocally, lack of hydration and other factors, it's very easy to drop consistency with your oral resonance, especially in some risk zones, like at the end of the sentence, when you're feeling performance pressure, or with conversation partners that you don't feel naturally at ease with, or when public speaking due to the impact of performance anxiety. Elite professional speakers Know how to secure consistent oral resonance that allows the voice to move forward in the face, thus meeting the listener with sound waves in the room rather than allowing those sound waves to get stuck in the back. And as a result, we know from research that this type of tone builds trust, rapport, and enhances ratings of your credibility and expertise. The reason for that is the tone sounds secure and confident rather than hesitant. And listeners naturally ascribe, as unfair as it may seem, tone of voice to quality of message. You might be wondering, is it okay to overlook an inconsistent, creaky, croaky, or hypernasal tone of voice? Sure, you have a choice with how you present, communicate, and what matters to you. And no doubt you have many strengths in place. But tone of voice can add a lot of polish to your message in terms of what the listener hears. We know from research that people like pleasant sounds, generally speaking, and are more inclined to listen to speakers and take their ideas seriously if they demonstrate consistent tone. Clear tone also reduces distraction in the message. When the voice moves forward in a flowing manner with even regular symmetry with the sound wave, people have more ability to focus on what you're saying. They're less distracted by disruptions in the tone. Tone of voice also matters at a structural, functional level. If you're in a team meeting and you can't get your tone together, resulting in people not being able to hear what you're saying or understand your message well in terms of the intensity of your requests and demands or needs, your message doesn't necessarily get conveyed with the intent and the motives that you envisioned, which can plummet the buy-in factor in the audience of listeners. Lastly, the ability to secure an even tone I tend to see among my clients will increase confidence in communication. There's nothing worse than opening our mouths and not being sure quite what will come out. And we obviously hear ourselves speaking, so disruptions in the sound of our vocal tone can distract us in finding our words, preparing the next thing we need to say, and start to have an impact on our self-regulation. It's a bit of a double-edged sword achieving even voice tone because there are so many performance pressure factors involved in that. And that's why I strongly recommend that every person knows how to warm up their voice what a clean, clear tone is and how to achieve that so that you can increase your consistency and show up with increased vocal presence. And this is what we call owning your voice, which means you have the capacity to know 
how to maneuver your muscles, how to time your message at the best possible advantage with the sound wave, because that will always impact how you feel about the message you're delivering and will definitely have repercussions for whether your listener finds your message interesting, charismatic, or engaging. By now, hopefully, this has been a nice aperitive to convince you that it's really fruitful to work on increasing the consistency of your voice tone to secure increased vocal clarity. So here are some tips and ideas for you to think about to take it further. If your voice is moving irregularly and sounding asymmetrical, you'll want to build up the muscle symmetry at a physiological level. The best solution for that is to get in place validated voice therapy exercises. If you've got questions about that, you can definitely get in touch with me or get started with the high performance communication audit in which we can identify where your voice tone is sitting at and what strategies and tools we need to implement. The next step is to work on postural symmetry. The tone of your voice is supported by the outlying structures that hold it. The neck position is really important, the way your chin sits, the gaze sits will frame the capacity for the muscle to sit loose and free with good support. If you're leaning forward too much or compressing your posture, you'll have less access to your air, you're impacting and compressing the actual muscle which sits in the neck. So knowing how to position your body will not only impact how people view you when they watch you speaking on stage or in team meetings, but will also have an acoustic impact that can either make or break your voice tone. A quick fix solution is to ensure that you're getting sufficient hydration. If you don't drink enough water or take in enough fluid, the voice will show up as rough and croaky. So please keep your fluids up and make sure you check out the resource on my website that will build up your vocal hygiene. Vocal hygiene relates to all the strategies you deploy that are not specifically with reference to vocal exercises and optimization at the tone and muscle maneuver level, things like hydration, pharmacology impacts, air climate impacts that you can manage to enhance the actual integrity of the muscle before you start to deploy high level techniques to improve how the sound is coming out in terms of the actual production. So make sure you check out that resource. I've linked it for you in the comments below. Voice tone changes or impacts that are of a negative nature can often be red flags and signals for greater medical conditions. So if you notice any drastic changes of your voice that have occurred over a two-week period and it's not changing and it's not returning to normal, I strongly recommend that you get a proper assessment of your voice by someone with clinical expertise in voice therapy or speech pathology, but make sure that they've got advanced voice assessment skills. If you've got questions, get in touch with me. I'm happy to help. When we use our voice, If you're a male or female, it really doesn't matter. The vocal muscle is moving rapidly and it creates some impact pressure, which will increase fatigue on the muscle. So just like if you're to run around the block or do a marathon or go for a kilometer swim in the pool, muscles of the voice also need warm up. I strongly encourage you to learn how to warm up your vocal muscle and engage in daily voice drills. You should be doing something daily with the vocal muscle if you're aiming for increased vocal health, consistency and stamina so that your communication gets more miles in at a consistent level in the way you sound. We've mentioned that self-regulation with your emotions can have a really positive impact on maintaining your vocal consistency. In fact, as an opera singer, it took me several years to learn how to master the fear and the performance pressure on stage to regulate my breathing for advanced vocal skills like singing high notes and conveying a character and singing in languages other than English. You don't need as much work if you're aiming to show up on stage for public speaking, but some basic strategies to regulate nervous performance anxiety so that your vocal tone is secure will be essential. Strongly encourage you to work on performance management strategies with someone who's qualified to assist you with both the voice tone needs at a clinical level and also at that performance level. I actually have a blog post about securing voice projection and managing public speaking anxiety. I've linked to two blogs in the comments below. Make sure you check those ones out. You might find them really helpful. 
many speakers have a good grip on their voice in terms of how to get the muscle working. Maybe you've done some extra, you know, speaking or singing lessons or drama lessons in the past that built up some basic understanding of how to get your voice projecting and working at the best in most scenarios. But if you do notice that your voice tone is altering when you're having difficult conversations, this is an area that needs some social intelligence training. So we can build out structures to assist you to have those difficult conversations. And once you've got your logical outline of what to say and how to position your message to endear your message to your audience or self-regulate performance pressure for difficult conversation partners, your voice will come to the party. So consider improving your niche communication skills for difficult conversations if you're finding that your voice tone is slipping. So you might be wondering, is there a secret to communicating effectively at work with more confidence and vocal elegance? Yes, there is. I've got something to share with you. Check it out. Is there a secret to communicating effectively at work with increased confidence and elegance? You can, in fact, stop rushes of speech, breakdowns in logical flow, and a croaky and reluctant voice tone, and replace these negative behaviors with elegant and eloquent statements that are attention-grabbing, convincing, and valuable. Learn the concrete science-backed behaviors you need to sound confident, persuasive, and comfortable when speaking at work. Take the High Performance Communication Audit today. More details over on my website. Today, we covered so much. We looked into how to determine the tone of voice, what is a healthy tone, the three types of voice tone, why tone of voice even matters, as well as some targeted ideas for you to think about in terms of how to increase your vocal tone consistency. Did you find this topic helpful? I'd love to learn more about your challenges and even success stories with your vocal tone. So make sure you reach out via the comments below with any questions you have, and also check out the blog linked over on my main platform at sarahgeiger.com. There you can stay up to date with loads of resources to secure your leadership communication and career success. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, can you do me a favor and click like? That helps me out immensely on YouTube. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you want executive speaking tips coming your way on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon and ciao for now.